fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rhythm. Both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh, he's taken Anderson. Anderson's up the hill. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. This is very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?! Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series under the brand new Aussie car banner, the Formula Skip Barber series brought to you by Symfinity and Virtual Motorsport Mental coming to you live on SimSpeed TV. We're taking that same format we love in the TCR short racing, short seasons, and we're adapting it to the open wheel format that always provides a lot of excitement no matter which track you put these cars on. We've got a six week calendar ahead of us and we're kicking things off here in Phillip Island here in virtual Australia. My name is Ryan Jones. Alongside me, joining me for the series, good to have David Haynes with me. And then, of course, Jay Kennedy is behind the scenes as well. But, David, this car, it's, I guess, a factor of the low speed that the slipstream is massive. And at a track like this, it can be pretty hard to pull away. Yeah, of course. G'day. It's always the case at Phillip Island, whatever car you take, that it's very fast through the final corner, a long run down the pit straight into a very, very fast turn one. High speeds all around the circuit does keep the pack racing very, very close. And of course, this is a car that is very, very accessible. Uh, the uh, iRacing Road Racer, it's almost the first car you get into after you jump out of Rookies. It's very forgiving on its road tyres that have a lot of slip angle and get grip to give. Uh, it's very forgiving with the amount of horsepower it's got, but to go fast and to race well in it requires a little bit of finesse, a little bit of understanding of what the car's doing, and that's why it is such a good training car that really uh, hones all of the skills you need as you move up the ranks, but it also creates some good racing of its own. It certainly does, and what I love about this car is the attitude you see from them, especially through some of the high-speed corners. Watch down at turn one throughout the course of the race. You'll see the rear end trying to step out all the way through the corner as they take as much throttle as they can. And uh, the car sticks but uh, you can get it wrong pretty easily if you just overstep that mark. So qualifying is done. Everything's been pushed forward a few minutes this season with the addition of five minutes to each race length. So let's take a look at our starting grid for our first of two races this evening. Pole position goes to Tim Gorkroger. And Matt Marsh starts alongside him. Aiden Coote and Ryan Jerrick on row two. Christopher Williams and Robert Cook off the third row of the grid ahead of Daniel Interizzi and Justin Howe, seventh and eighth. Angus Cook and Ryan Hookel running out the top ten. Over the page, got James Dyer and Kyle Simpson. Got uh, Matthew Mitz there in 13th. Sean Doyle, 14th. Dennis Hancock, 15th. 16th is Oliver Marquardt, 17th. Nathaniel Weber, 18th. Julian Mucky, 19th. Joshua Lenderthaler, and 20th, Gordon Smith. Nathan Verney and Jake Sperry lighting up 21st, 22nd. I think Sperry's been disconnected, though, through uh, technical issues that he won't take the grid, at least. Phil Arkelian, Tom Versheldon, Vic Bentvelsen, Todd Maxfield, Brendan Mackay, Leon Williams, Brendan Martin. Uh, your 29 cars that set lap times. And then a few more grinning up behind that uh, did not manage to put down a lap in their three attempts they had in the 10-minute session. There's going to be another qualifying session as well after this for drivers to sort of reset themselves and maybe put themselves further up the order if they made a mistake there on that first one, ready for race two. But this one's a 15-minute sprint race affair. No pit stops, just a straight dash from lights out to the checkered flag. Can anyone pull away at the front, or are we going to see an absolute slipstream fest? I dare say the latter. So Gork Roger and Matt Marsh off the front row. An extremely important launch here at Phillip Island. It's a long run down to turn one. It dips behind the hill. You can't even see it when you line up on the starting grid. If you bog down here, you're going to go backwards really quickly. But let's get ready to go forwards. Because the red lights come on. The revs rise. For the first time in Aussie Car Formula Skip Barbers. We're going to go racing. 
as that green flag flies and they crawl away. Someone stalls there, a couple stalls, another one further back in the pack. But they all avoid them and we're clean off the grid four wide for a moment there. Down at a turn one, Gork Roger will lead them. Marshall retains second from Aiden Coote. They're side by side for fourth. Yep, so pretty clean launch from almost everyone, but it is possible to stall these cars from a standing start. We might have seen one or two drivers do that. The rest of the field did well to avoid them, but a couple cars around in the southern loop on cold tyres, lap one. Kyle Simpson got rotated in front of a few. That set another car out wide, and now they're three abreast coming off the exit of the corner. That doesn't work. Airborne for two of them, and they spin, and that causes a big wreck with another driver getting caught up in that. Three cars involved in the end as the... Uh, cut parts come flying off and that was the case of three cars vying for the same piece of real estate doesn't work out dave no certainly didn't wheels got interlocked and quite a few cars got well up in the air here is a move going on as you see how tough these cold tires can be on the race start now Crodra still leads but ryan jerrick is trying to pick a spot off here trying to go the long way around at the hay shed and now up into Lukey Heights is on the inside. But look at the outside run that Coot got there. But a snap of oversteer through the exit of the corner. Thankfully, he ends up with the inside line for MG. And he uh, will lead that little group back onto the main straight. This is a great scrap here. Uh, Tom Gorkrod just pulled out to a bit of a margin while these guys battle behind. Indeed, going to catch a replay here. And I can imagine what this is going to be. This is coming out of the Southern Loop and the cause of that big incident. So you see it check up the fields. One of the 111 cars right in the middle. Big squeeze goes on and then yeah, nowhere to react. Nowhere for anyone to go and wheels off the wagon for quite a couple of cars on lap one. Unfortunate for those guys, including Carl Simpson, who had to go on the tow hook. But racing resumes for everyone else. The meat in the sandwich almost had a front flip in that one. Aiden Coote, I said the uh, re-run is going to be stepping out of them through turn one. I think he added out the absolute edge of uh, how far you can get the rear end sideways without spinning. He loses a spot as a result. Jerick slides on by, quite literally slides on by. And Matt Marsh behind as well. But look at that already, the slipstream, the toe, the slingshot for Coot. Back up the inside of Jerick. They'll run wheel to wheel once again. He takes it back away. And I think this is going to be the tail of this race as they battle for second. The longer they keep doing this, the easier it becomes with the 469 at the front. Matt Marsh, very easy to spot there in a sea of otherwise relatively dark coloured cars. But you're exactly right. Uh, Tim Gakroja right at the front there. 1.7 seconds is delighted to see all of these drivers battling here over second place. It's exactly what he was hoping for. They're too wide uh, through Haysheds towards Lukey Heights here. Matt ha Marsh drops out one more spot. You can see them all struggling to pull it up down in MG as the uh, dip downhill at quite a steep angle. The car wants to surge forward and understeer wide, so you've got to really break a bit earlier than you'd expect. Not to mention, these things can be slightly tricky to pull up. You can pinch the uh, right or left front relatively easily. Watch this. Stay on board with Christopher Williams here. Look at how powerful the slipstream is. As Aiden Coote going to uh, get pretty much done and Robs and Muggs down this front straight. There goes Jerick and there goes Marsh in the middle of both of them. Yeah, three wide, and then it's even sorted itself out before they got to turn one there. Such was the overspeed that Marsh had, grabbing two for one, like Ryan Jerick had done a lap before. Jerick is going to try to slide out in the middle of that one, hold on to third place. Uh, so Marsh lasts up with six tenths taller than Gork Rogers. That's roughly how much they're losing. Although, distant toe, they're only two seconds back. You never know. Look at this. Now Marsh having to defend up into the hairpin. And, oh, that's close. That might have been a little bit of contact, in fact, from Ryan Jerick. Pushed him a little bit wide. And now squeezes him on the exit of the corner. Jerick really trying to get to the head of this train. He, he probably feels like he's got the pace to pull away, given the opportunity. But the package that these cars have not allowing him as such an opportunity as now he's caught side by side again with Marsh up into Hayshed. He's probably one of the few cars you can run side by side through Hayshed and not fear for your life. 
Yeah, but uh, some of these drivers might well still be oh, fearing no, for it. As there's a tiny bit of contact there on the back of Jarek, sends him into a half spin and goes and collects Robert Cook, who is innocent in that. A couple more drivers pile in as well. Just as you said, <laughs> that they might not be afraid. I think there are quite a few drivers there that are going to require uh, a car change and an underwear change. So Angus Cook as well was the other car involved. So it all stemmed from Aiden Coote got into the back of Ryan Jerick up through Lukey Heights, turned him around. They both spun. Jerick spins to the inside, collects Robert Cook. And then I believe it was the other Cook that got into... Um, Too many Cooks spoil the broth. Coote, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so here's the replay from Robert Cook. He sees him spinning in front. He thinks I can keep to the inside, but still just gets collected on the uh, right rear there sends him around and into the gravel trap lucky it didn't pluck the right rear off the car action he can limp it back to pit road so it really shakes up what had been massively close from second through to tenth uh with that incident so extends the lead gauk roger has out to three seconds matt marsh and williams are then battling over second and third you have to look back to fourth here for where the pack battle is at. That's Coot and Dyer coming into uh, Honda, I think. They managed to mainly sort themselves out there, running wide out onto the AstroTurf as well. Ryan Hukel just behind with Daniel into Rizzi watching on too. So this is another four or five car scrap in the making. And <laughs> once again, Aiden Coot is making his debut, or making the series debut, and putting himself right in the center of attention. He's been in the thick of it right since lap one. It's showing no signs of evading as he heads. Another train of cars up through the top, the highest point on the circuit. And then they dive down the hill into the braking zone. And that's a mistake. And that's a wide line as a result. And a position relinquished for a moment. But a great exit for Dyer to fight back on Hukul, who may have made a mistake because he dropped a lot of time off the exit of MG. Yeah, you would have thought that was a done deal. There's a nice little bit of cambering at the inside of the corner to help you as well as it being the shorter route. But uh, yeah, somehow he's kind of fought, uh, fought back at that one. Big winner in this pack here, though, is still uh, James Dyer, who qualified 11th, now running up in fifth. Oh, so there's a couple sure of drivers that in this short race are grabbing a couple spot. Someone's off there. Into Rizzi had uh, four tyres in the grass off the outside of turn one. And that's uh, four tyres and a whole lot more off in the grass of Christopher Williams at the Southern Loop. So he drops a few spots, goes back to ninth place as a result. Motor simulation replay coming at you now. That's Williams out there in the weeds and couldn't quite keep it out of the gravel. It slows him down a whole heap does keep him off the fence though so be thankful for that we'll take him just a little bit to clean those tires back off and get back up to full racing speed so dire big moves up into third that is eight positions gained for him so far black and red car leading this little train who we ride on board with looking backwards at coot and interesse oh drift angle from all of these guys and the track's pretty grippy right now, 26 degrees Celsius early in the morning kind of temperatures. So, oh, Dyer goes a little wide there again, but somehow he's getting a great exit uh, from the bottom of the hill there, even if he's not on the preferred line. He's going to be under pressure. He's not got a big enough margin coming out of this final corner. Look for Aiden Coots to be on the offensive now as they sweep out of the last corner on the circuit. And he actually gets to the inside for turn one. Got a long way before they get there. And Aiden Coote's been disqualified from the race. Well, won't be completing that move then. Yeah, failing he, to serve yeah. the penalty. And I would hazard a guess the penalty would have been for the contact with Jericho up at Lukey Heights. And uh, the laps elapsed. Laps allowed, elapsed, and he uh, wasn't down on pit road for the drive through, so disqualifications for the race. That'll be a lesson learned and uh, probably an easy mistake to make, I'd say, in the heat of the moment. Either way, got to cost him big time. Yeah, it's helping out Interissi here, who's gained a spot and suddenly right with 
Dyer looking uh, for the move. Dyer has again a wiggle. He's struggling with whatever the brake bias is, getting that car turned in in places here. Um, and of course, grabbing the downshifts in this Skip Barber, it's not an automated sequential transmission like you might be used to in a TCR car or some other more modern cars. Uh, there's still some finesse required to the upshifts and the downshifts, and we saw that from some of the drivers stalling on the grid. Take a look at Markart pressuring and going by it. Hey, Shed on Hukel. That was a very sweet move. And we'll see whether he can now move forward and put the pressure on Dyer. So give me three laps to go when our drivers cross the line this time. Plenty of battles that are happening all up and down the field as it always happens with the Skip Barber car. We've been focused in the top 10 because it has been relentless. Now we look at Robert Cook, Nathan Verney. Cook started a little bit higher up the order. We saw some of those uh, those issues across Lukey Heights though. Currently fighting for 10th here with Verney who started 21st on the grid. Now looking to make it into the top 10. Might also need a visor tear off if that's not on our camera. <sighs> I think he probably might. He's going to have a chance to do it now because he's now in to some more clean air on the inside of the turn. I'm going to make sure he gets it turned in nicely. Keep it off the outside of the racetrack. He does. As a look up the inside at Southern Loop, he's certainly left the door wide open and he's sliding and losing a lot of momentum. That rear end having a party. Robert Cook now giving the incentive to attack back. Looking up the inside. They're going to run wheel to wheel here. Inside line, though, for Verney, if you can keep the car there, should be able to keep this spot. But a great scrap. The final spot inside the top 10. And just behind them, Matty Jones, started 33rd, is now 12th. Yeah, as far as I see, that's our that's our biggest mover. So that... Did he even have a qualifying time? Racing his way up through the field. So that is a, a, a solid effort. Williams, Mookie, Doyle, and it is this battle here, Julian Mookie and Christopher Williams trading places a couple times back and forth before Mookie is successful. Williams uh, keeping it all out of the grass uh, this time, unlike earlier where we saw a little issue at Southern Loop. Yeah, riding on board now. Going all the way down the... Uh pit lane fence but that's not going to work because now they're three wide and straight through the middle comes Sean Doyle to the head of the train Christopher Williams on the inside and then Julian Muki goes to the back of this trio we've seen that happen a couple times picking up a double slipstream down the pit straight seems very very effective especially if you come out the final corner with just a little bit more space to then really wind up and get a run before you pull out of the toe so move very well done. Love to see it. Still a great scrap here for the final step on the podium. Oliver Markart trying to fend off James Dyer. This is a penultimate lap of the race. As there's a move again for six up the inside. That's Christopher Williams putting himself there. Oh, slides off the exit of the corner. Just tagged the grass on the outside and flicked the car into a... Uh, how about that for Doyle around the outside of yeah. Siberia, though? Massive confidence, massive grip. And, you know, normally it's a long corner. If you're around the outside there, you just find yourself, you know, losing a lot of time, losing a lot of real estate. Made it stick. Good on him. Back to P3 into MG. No move. Markart going to be under a lot of uh, steam from a hard charging gentleman behind him, though, when he gets down to turn one. Another mode of simulation replay before we take a look at that. Vic Bent Velsen has run into the back of Matt Hodson, and they've both gone around the rear wing bent now, out of shape on that number 28 car as a result. Final lap down, of the race right now as they're the crossing that line for the white flag. Dyer looking for the move. 
Up the inside, easy as you like, takes it away, but now can he hold it for the rest of this final lap? Markhart is going to fight this one. There's no doubt about that. It's behind. They're still battling as well. Williams still on sticks as Mookie and Doyle were side by side through turn one. A slight slide out of the southern loop for Dyer, but he's got a good gap heading towards the hairpin. Dyer's going to defend the inside a little bit. But in the end, doesn't need to do a whole lot there. Where else on the lap is an overtaking opportunity if the driver in front doesn't make a mistake? Possibly MG if he really nails it through Haitian and up through Lukey Heights. But he's got to be really brave to get it done and pull it up in time as well. It's going to be tough. Maybe a slingshot across the line as well if he gets a great run. Out of the final corner. It's not done with yet. Look how close he is through Haitian. He's looking. To try to find a way through. Dyer has to be perfect. Across the top of the hill. I'll dive down. He's clear into MG. Just a couple more corners for him. And he makes a mistake. He pinches the right front. He slides through the corner. This is going to give the run to Markart. Look for the run to the finish line. But out front. Tim Gorkrodger. He's driven away from them after putting it on pole. And he's going to take out the first ever Aussie car Formula Skip Barber race. As behind them, the battle for third. Here it comes to the line. Markart pulls to the pit fence side of the track. Side by side. Here they come. Who's it going to be? Dyer got him. By two hundredths of a second to put himself on the final step of the podium. Drama on the final lap as well, further back with uh, Mookie and Williams, I think, coming together. That's one we're going to probably have to take a look at again. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact not working out very well in these little cars. That's a flat tile. We'll take a look at the replay here. This is the three-car battle we were loving to see. Sean Doyle, Christopher Williams, and Mookie in the background here. They come down towards MG. I had half an eye on this when it happened live. And you can see uh, Williams out there gets just tagged a little bit by Mookie. And then the two entangled parts coming off the car. And then a battle behind comes and swallows them up. So both of them lost out big on the last lap. Is that always four wide there? Are we calling that four wide? Yep. That's crazy stuff there. To finish that race off, Mookie unfortunately ends up out in the uh, weeds through all of that. And don't go anywhere as we go through our results. We've still got qualifying and race number two to come up for you here on Tim Speed TV. But these are your full race results from our first race. Brought to you by Sim Footy, the Tim Gork Roger winning by 5.8 seconds back to Matt Marsh. Then that scrap for third between Dyer and Markart. Hukul coming across in fifth. The scrap for six was Titanic right to the end. Sean Doyle coming home ahead of Dennis Hancock, Nathan Verney, Robert Cook, and Manny Jones, your top ten. Over the page in 11th, uh, Matthew Mitz, then Christopher Williams we saw involved in that scrap with Julian Mookie. Both of them dropped quite a couple of spots from that on the last lap. Uh, Joshua Lindenthaler in 14th, Nathaniel Weber 15th, Ian Ford there in 16th, Vic Bentfeldson in 17th, Matt Hodson 18th, Angus Cook in 19th, and Leon Williams in 20th. Over the page there again, Peter Wilkinson coming home in 21st, Nicholas Walsh, Justin Howe, and Ryan Jerrick. With the last cars on the lead lap, then your drivers that run into issues all finishing as retirements from this race so don't go anywhere we'll be right back after a short break ready for more action here from Phillip Island in the Aussie car formula skip barber series
fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rid of the Maloney! Oh, oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the hill. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. This is very close. These guys, I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?! back here to Philip Hyde on Sim Speed TV if the Aussie Car Formula Skip Barber Series cracking first race, getting set for the second half of the evening. A 10 minute qualifying session about to begin in just under a minute's time. And then a 25 minute race with a pit stop thrown in there as well. We're going to see the action doubled here for the uh, second part of the uh, night, David. Yeah, 25 minute race now. A pit stop required to take at least two tyres. And uh, I've double checked. Uh, you can request any combination of two tyres you feel like. So do you want to go only rears? Do you want to go only right sides? Do you want to go only fronts? Who knows? But whatever you do, uh, those new tyres you put on are going to be cold again. And we saw lap one versus lap and a half or so that uh, the cold tyres make it even sketchier than otherwise. So when you take your pit stop, which tyres you take is going to be quite important, I would think. And when you take your stop, if there's anything like the Wednesday TCR series... We've seen pit stops everywhere from the end of lap one to the beginning of the final lap. And they have the same pit stop regulations as this, so it's a, a two-tire stop. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Going to be a, quite a bit of strategy talk for just a 25-minute race. But also making sure you can get away from battles when you pit and come out in clean air because we saw the advantage that gave to Finn Gorkrods. He was just able to walk away comfortably while they duked it out for second place behind him in a monstrous battle about five or six cars strong at one point so you've really got to make sure you don't get caught up in needless battles if you pit early and end up back in traffic yeah, I mean, as always you do it early you might be giving yourself the chance to get some clean air or you might get caught right at the tail of the pack consequently you know if you pit late you might spend the whole you know first three quarters of the race uh, stuck in battles you maybe didn't need to be a part of. So exactly when you time that is going to be super important. And we know there's one um, 200 IQ strategy brain uh, in this race, and it looks like uh, that uh, Jake Sperry has made it for race two, uh, overcoming the issues that prevented him from racing in race one. I don't know whether it was an issue or a blessing in race one, but we'll see how the second one goes for Sperry here, who I don't think's ever copped a break from me in the comments box, unfortunately. Uh, he gives but, uh, as good as he gets, so he it's uh, himself up for that. It's a difficult Roger to be fast again, but casting a line for the back, maybe Ryan Jarek, expecting to potentially get a couple spots higher up on the grid. It wasn't a good race for him after that contact, unfortunately, with Aiden Coote. He was having a good battle up until that point, so he's looking to bounce back here. Certainly is. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to set their fastest lap on their first flying lap at this qualifying session. I think look for them to take just a little bit longer to really get the tyres in the optimal window, feel out the track conditions. By all accounts, it looks like the circuit is a little bit hotter for this qualifying than it was for race one. So that that, that changes it a little bit as well. Yes, yeah, so it's 29 degrees, so a bit less grip out there on the track. Won't be a massive amount, but might be just Those enough. Quick to, hands. To, yeah. Oh. He has been working out uh, in the off season, Jake Sperry. I'm sure you know all about that. I haven't. I've just been. I've just been eating fried chicken. That's all I've done since January. <laughs> That's all I've done since about five years ago. Um, <laughs> who so resisted good fried chicken? Uh, not sponsored, <laughs> by the way. Um, How good it would be. James to be, Dyer, Aiden Coote. 
going to be interesting if that battle resumes here in the second race because probably some unsolved business between them. Ryan Jerick as well in the mix. So we're really scrapping hard. Cost themselves, I think, a shot at the win. Not least with the contact, but with the uh, battling that allowed Gork Roger to run away. Yeah, so Jerick uh, in the pit lane for the minute. Uh, we'll see what he ends up doing. But no uh, gamesmanship, no draft involved in this qualifying session. There are quite a few uh, different teams, different teammates out there. And if it were an open session, you can imagine a couple of them you know, buddying up, trying to work together. But it is uh, every man for himself in this uh, private session at the minute. I wonder if the helmet there for Braden McKay is helping him out any. That's something. A 51-624 for McKay. He goes to second, immediately put back to... Uh... Eighth, and he continues to tumble as more times come in. Matt Marsh fastest at the moment, three tenths over Aiden Coote. Robert Cook sitting in third. James Dyer and Christopher Williams at the same time both go quicker. A 49 flat to a 49 2 for Williams. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the first flying laps coming in right now. We'll see how representative that really ends up being. I know on the out laps, some drivers were trying harder than others to warm up those tires so uh, that will uh, also come into play then for the second and third flying laps that maybe some drivers weren't so aggressive on the warming and are going to be faster later on so you need got to that sweet spot. the sweet spot between warm tires and worn tires because the more aggressively you try to warm them the quicker they wear out before the end of your third lap Precisely. So it's one person uh, without a time just yet. Oliver Market is going to come through here. And he's not far from the line to see where he stacks up on the board for the minute. Giving it as far left as he can on the run down to the uh, start finish strike. Where's he going to go with 150.483? That puts him in a 14th place. And he'll look for a bit more of an improvement here on his second and third laps. Uh, Dyer's looped at MG on his second lap, so he won't improve this time by. What about Justin Howe? Fifth. Big improvement. A lot of the drivers coming across the line at this minute means that that timing tower updates very, very quickly. Uh, Matt Marsh improves at the top. Dennis Hancock goes there into eighth, and a lot of those times moving very, very quickly at the minute. Not seeing Gork Roger on the track, so he's going to struggle to get pole if he doesn't get out there in the next few seconds. Peter Wilkinson, at the moment, he's 18th, and now you can make that 17th. Yeah, I mean, we definitely saw race one. There was uh, a small handful of drivers with no qualifying time who still started the race. So I don't know if we're seeing the same suspects again. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like it was from a, a lack of opportunity to set a qualifying time or from, you know, spoiling one lap as Lindenthaler does right here. Um, you know, it, it certainly seems like there's ample opportunity with the three laps allowed in 10 minutes to put a time on the board. So I wonder if it's an intentional strategy from uh, from some of the drivers at this point. We all see it is a short race, despite us calling it the feature. It's only 25 minutes long, so it's an interesting choice either way. Oliver Marka, can he uh, go higher than 15th? He sure can, up to 6th place. We'd be very happy with the improvement there. He's still got another lap up his sleeve. She'll just get under his belt. Matt Marsh is done for the session. So too is Christopher Williams. Once he completes his lap, so Williams is coming through the final corner. Can he improve? If he finds three tenths of a second, he'll go to provisional pole. Aiden Coote, he goes to provisional pole. Now the gap required for Williams is four tenths of a second. Yep, lots more drivers coming across the line right now and improving. Oh. So it looks like with every lap, most of our drivers do get closer. Missed out. 
by three hundredths of a second did Christopher Williams on that final attempt. Last lap for Wilkinson, a 50.8, improves to a 50.5, stays 19th. Carl Simpson as well, his final attempt from 12th place. He will not improve, unfortunately, a mistake on that lap. Three seconds off the pace. So that's about 80% of our grid uh, have now used their allotment of laps. Uh, a minute and some left will allow drivers who left the pit lane a little bit later, like Market here, to still get around and complete this lap. Expect Marka to go somewhere inside the top 10 based off his first and second lap. So every time he put down a lap, uh, he was knocked down the order a few seconds later by drivers completing the next lap of the uh, qualifying phase. He'll finally catch up and complete his uh, session, a 48-9. And he does. He goes to fifth, well inside the top ten. Yep. One of five drivers in the 148s there. So good effort. Leon Williams. Uh, yeah, that time doesn't look entirely representative. That's about a minute short of what we'd expect. That's better. <laughs> Still 27th there for Leon Williams. Practicing the pit entry, some of our drivers tell you what, that's not a bad idea right now, is it? It's a difficult pit entry here, Ryan. High speed. High speed and very narrow. No reference to when he dive on the brakes either, so it is very tricky. But Sheldon's not going to make it. So thank you to Symfinity and Virtual Most Spot Mentor bringing you our qualifying and our qualifying results, our starting grid for race two. The 25-minute feature, Aiden Coote on the pole, bouncing back from the DNF in race one. Christopher Williams will start second. Matt Marsh and James Dyer on the second row of the grid. Oliver Hamarkard and Angus Cook riding up off row three. Robert Cook and Nathan Verney from seventh and eighth. Ryan Hukel and Julian Mookie starting from ninth and tenth. To 11th for Sean Doyle and Matthew Mitz in 12th. Carl Simpson, 13th. Daniel Interussi, 14th. 15th is Maddie Johns, who is our, one of our big movers in race one. Let's see what happens in race two from 15th on the grid. Justin Howe in 16th. Dennis Hancock, 17th. Braden Martin, 18th. Matt Hodson, 19th. And Peter Wilkinson in 20th. Peter Mackay and Vic Bent Velzen line up off the... Uh... 11th row of the grid, Ian Ford and Jake Sperry behind them. Nicholas Walsh and Nathaniel Weber, 25th and 26th. Leon Williams, Joshua Lindethal are from 27th to 28th. Tom Maxfield, Singer Kogo running out your top 30. Yeah, Jack Roger uh, first with no qualifying time. And then it's followed by Ryan Jerick. Uh, probably not going to see race controls, but uh, Gordon Smith, uh, Phil Arakelian and Tom the Sheldon, who we saw, tried to set a time, just missed out by a couple seconds They're on the grid. They've got about 30 seconds. But I wonder, from the likes of uh, Guck Roger, is this an intentional ploy? Start from the back, maybe do the pit stop early, and have a lot of clean space. Yeah, if it is, it'll be interesting. I don't know how it's going to work out for him. It's a massive disadvantage, especially with how much the field gets checked up on that opening lap. 10 seconds before we get this one underway. Let's look for the lights and for the launch of the run down to turn one. It's Coot versus Williams. Five red lights. Oh, plenty of revs. And a green flag to get us underway for the second time tonight. Reasonable start from Williams from second, but he won't be able to get alongside Coot. Matt Marsh covering off James Dyer. It's up five, all single file. Yeah, no car stalling that time. Everyone giving it plenty of revs and uh, keeping the motor running. So we are hopefully on that basis going to have a cleaner race. But into Rusi, a little bit of contact, and he goes right out from turn one. Probably a bit of damage there. A couple other cars in the background there getting tr uh, tripped up. Oh, no, that's Oliver Marcardi lost it through the southern loop. And as he spun back the other way, he collected. And there's some victim with him. As it's on for the lead of the race, Coot having to defend. 
as uh, Williams sets himself up high and wide through the uh, hairpin. Not going to work out. And Matt Marsh will try to get by him. James Dyer watching on as well. Yeah, yet more carnage in the background, but our top five are having a fantastic little battle here. Matt Marsh just trying to size up the two in front. So oh, look up the inside. The Luke Luke Heights, Heights. Indeed. As Sw bold. Switching it back where he might not have expected. Doesn't work out. Now he's on the wrong side of the track and Dye might be able to get by him. He opts not to try. Lucky to escape with that. Without losing any spots. Oh, Dyer, a big mistake. And onto Pit Road. Marsh, Double early stop. Marsh. Going for that lap one strategy. He's uh, seen that he's not going to be able to get away in the lead. And he's uh, calling that one early. Got to be careful on that pit entry, like we said. Also, no pit lane speed limit in these cars. You do not want to be stung speeding. Tim Gork, Roger comes to pit road. So too does Robert Cook. We'll see how this lap one strategy works out then for those three drivers. On the replay, yeah. turn one, one incident into Rusi just mixes wheels. Maybe squeezing down a little bit, not sure, but it has disastrous consequences at that kind of speed. Indeed it does. They were caught three wide. I just don't think he gave enough room for three wide there. Mark yeah, here with realize. as you say, cold tires, gets it very sideways, checks it up, and then, yeah, just the panels locked together there with Nathan Verney, who they had nowhere to go really. Back to live pictures. This is the battle for the lead. Williams and Coote. So it's a two-car breakaway now, and then Dyer and Cook a little bit between them. So our leader hasn't got away like it didn't race one, like Gork Roger did. So it could be a bit of a bigger scrap for the race win, but we've got to remember that we've seen three drivers pit on the first lap. Robert Cook, Gork Roger, and Matt Marsh. Matt Marsh, one that could challenge for the lead. And uh, a couple of our drivers who got involved in some lap one problems, if they went on the tow hook, came back to pit lane and put those two tyres on, we might see them again having lost a little bit less time than if it was just an out-and-out -out sprint race. It's Gordon Smith having a little issue on his own, unfortunately, and finding that that big stack of tyre wall there is a bit magnetic to a skip barber. Here's the run for third place behind the leaders. Angus Cook slingshots by James Dyer and takes away the final step on the podium. Side by side, further behind them as well. It's a 28 and a 22. Hodson down on the inside, losing out as Walsh carrying a whole head of steam around the outside of that corner. Yeah, you can do that. If you can hold it around the outside of turn one, then the inside for the southern loop is very, very beneficial. These guys are looking very, very evenly matched, though. So a cracking scrap here. What's 11th and 12th? Walsh is up 14 spots already. Part of that is some drivers having made their uh, compulsory pit stop. But uh, that is just going to show that uh, not having a qualifying time, far less a detriment in this 25-minute compulsory pit stop race than it is in a 15-minute sprint. Yeah, I wonder how much further he can go then with uh, still 20 minutes left to go in this race. Coots having to defend again. Williams is not giving this one to him at all. And Coots desperate to get as many points as he can after picking up none in the first race. Defensive into MG. Might be worth Williams pitting here and getting himself into some clean air. Certainly it's been a popular option for some others. We'll keep our eye uh, potentially towards that pit entry, see if any more of our top drivers uh, decide to jump in that direction. But I think... If you're going to pit super early, you either do it on lap one or you wait a little bit and hope that going a couple laps longer will keep you away from some of the traffic. He may also be of the opinion that the slipstream here is actually helping him go faster, so might be enjoying being tucked up behind Coot at the moment while there's no pressure from behind. 
a much tighter line for Williams through turn one. Coot struggled to keep it on the racetrack. He only just kept his left sides within the uh, boundaries of the uh, apex on the outside of the corner. So he might be struggling for a bit of understeer in his car. So, run a little bit down the hill towards a hairpin here. What's the defense from Coot? He uh, definitely uh, tries to dissuade Williams from trying anything. And they will stay 1-2 in that order. Matt Marsh was in third place or fourth place potentially when he jumped into the pit lane very, very early on lap one. He's now just gone and set the fastest lap of the race, a 148.5. So he's uh, clearly got those tyres up into their window now. He is pressing on, and you have to say, if he's managing to go faster than Coote and Williams, if they stay out, they're potentially jeopardising their strategy. Here's a replay. Down into the hairpin. This is going to be ugly, I'd say. Overcooks it on the entry, and it's Justin Howe that loses out, having to avoid a car on the inside. So he'll be frustrated with that for sure. As now to pit road comes Williams. So he's had enough of being stuck behind Coot. And he decides he wants to bring it to Pit Road. We'll see. And keep a very close eye on where he rejoins. Relative to Matt Marsh. A couple more takers behind as well. Yeah, I mean, great battles continue on circuit. I've kind of got my eyes on Williams' pit stop here. I just want to see which tyres he takes. I'm guessing that... The most common strategy would be the two rears. I think that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, Matt Marsh, where's he going to be relative to Williams, who pitted from second? Williams is just rolling now. Still at pit lane speed, now starting to accelerate. Matt Marsh, where he is right here, will still be picking up a bit of a toe uh, off. That might be Jake Sperry. So that gets him up to speed. He's going to get him. Slices through on the inside. And... Uh... Well, that would put him alongside Coot, based off where they were, before Williams pitted as Sperry throws it off the track in sympathy of being lapped, effectively. Almost. Oh, he's just a pit stop behind now. Not quite a lap, not yet. <laughs> if you're going to pick on the poor guy, at least make it factual. I'm uh, so, so used to him going a lap down. It's just habit. Well, hey, we're only nine minutes into a 25-minute race. It can still happen. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And there is still plenty to unfold, really, when we talk about pit stops. Uh, Tim Gauk Roger here has made his pit stop. Last time around, he set the fastest lap of the race. So uh, despite no qualifying time, I think he's certainly still in it. As Christopher Williams is around, the car that was net third oh. just had a loop in Siberia. That's no good for him at all. Gauk Roger's only six seconds behind Marsh, by the way. And he's well ahead of Williams now after that spin. Aiden Coote stays out for another lap. Sean Doyle is in second ahead of Ryan Hugel. They had a titanic uh, battle through the Southern Loop. Last lap, Doyle was fighting for every bit of grip he could find on the outside and managed to prevail over Hugel in that little scrap. Weber there and demonstrates what's difficult about the pit entry here. It uh, tightens up a little bit. It's narrow and the grass is uh, very, very slippery. So you want to attack that pit entry. You absolutely do, but you over, overdo it. The uh, the margin for error is very, very fine. A couple of other drivers on the lane as well. So a few drivers opting for that early strategy. We'll see who decides to pit maybe on the, the penultimate lap. You just saw there Wilkinson losing out to Martin up at the first corner as Martin went by. So Matt Marsh has now got two seconds to the car in front, which is Tom for Sheldon, who's up 25 spots. And he's got four seconds over the car behind. He's in a very comfortable spot on the racetrack at the moment. And his last lap was 148.368. Aiden Coote did 148.5, two tenths slower. And remember that Williams rejoined about five car lengths behind Marsh. He pitted a car length behind Coote. So, in fact, Coote's falling behind Marsh, I'd say, relatively speaking now. 
Yep, we'll see what the traffic does, though, because if he lost one second to traffic, then the fact that he's two seconds a lap faster uh, means nothing for Matt Marsh, and here's some of the some of that. What's he involved with here? He's involved with Tom Versheldon. He's going to try and go around the outside at MG, and that works, but still, it's it's a risky strategy here from, from Marsh trying to make this undercut. You have to say, uh, now he's got clean air and can absolutely focus. Aiden Coote's laps have been uh, pretty reasonable as he sets a 48-1 uh, this lap just gone as well. So th th there's still a lot to fight for for Marsh and Gauk Roger here while Coote has the clean air. Yeah, fastest lap, yeah. What was it forty-seven nine? Sorry, so uh, it was a tenth quicker last lap, or the lap before last. He was six tenths quicker that lap. He's closing in on Marsh. Only five seconds back now. I think this format's doing good stuff for us. You know, it's a twenty-five minute lap, and there's some drivers really twenty-five minute race, and drivers <laughs> really pushing on through the this field. Is an <laughs> 25 minute no, lap <laughs> it's not i love it's not i love man either um but i mean you, you knock some of the wheels off this car you might take 25 minutes to get around a lap but yes still we've got some drivers really pressing on who need to make the overtakes need to keep climbing up the field and kyle simpson has had a little bit of contact and he's not happy is anyone ever happy when they make contact Oh, yeah, he won't be happy. That car... It depends what type of contact, and it depends where, but uh, he's not happy with that. Sean Doyle and Ryan Hookle both pitting from second and third. We're going to get a replay of what happened to Simpson. From fourth place, when it happened, falls back to fifth now. That's him on the inside and getting hit from behind. And that rear wing, damaged, may have been clipped by uh, the next car along as well. Some ways to look at this. One is, you know, he was to the inside and then sort of washed out. The other one is he's been hit from behind and hard to really immediately tell from that angle. But, you know, tough to be Kyle Simpson, you know, running well and, uh, yeah, lose out a bunch of time, a bunch of spots. Fastest lap of the race has just fallen twice. Matt Marsh beat it and then was immediately followed across the line by Tim Guck Roger putting in a 47.595. And Gorkrod just absolutely blitzed Hukul and Doyle on pit road. So he's comfortably net second now. The big question mark over where Eden Coot rejoins the race this track. I'm trying to do some maths in my head, but it's not my strong suit or even my second strongest suit or even in the top 10. How much does he need to gain a lap to get to the back of Marsh? Well, six laps to go. Uh, Gark Roger is about four and a half seconds behind Marsh. So if he can find six, seven, or eight tenths of a second per lap, then I definitely think Gark Roger is in line to uh, maybe make it the double. Uh, Jake Sperry's missing a rear wing there. <laughs> Why? This is the question. I can only assume he's going for the low drag setup, but I am questioning its efficacy. Efficiency? Yeah. Look at this side by side. Sperry's got a good view for it. Dyer and Huckle. Deal. Finally. Dyer prevails, but bad news for him, Hukul's going to have the slipstream and the slingshot opportunity. Indeed, both these guys have pitted, so uh, oh, wow. they're racing to the end from here. Gork Roger, eight tenths quicker last time by. Over well, uh, you don't need to crunch too many numbers for that one to work out he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Hukul there, just saw, rolling out of the throttle, He's happy to ride along with Dyer for the minute. The official gap. 
3.5 seconds. And uh, I'll check in with Aiden Coots lap times as well because... 47.9, so three tenths slower than Gok Roger. I'll tell you what. Aiden Coot may rejoin right in this battle if he pits soon. He's in. He comes to the lane. This is the money stop for Coot. He's got to nail the entry here. Use every last bit of the speed before he dives to the pit road speed. Don't speed as you dive down the hill a little bit there. His box is going to be the furthest along because he was the pole sitter. That means when he leaves the box, he's uh, probably not going to need to worry about the pit lane speed. He's just going to be flooring it out of that box and up to speed as he can. So there he finds his pit stall and front goes up. That's interesting. I've seen almost everyone else decide on changing the rear tyres. So that is... Uh, and he's away in 11 seconds, getting up to speed. Comes Marsh. There comes Gark Roger. I think Marsh is certainly in it. Gark Roger's not going to be close enough to, to grab Coot. So, Marsh will lock eyes in the rear wing of Aiden Coot's machine. Can he get to the back of them? Can Gork Roger get to the back of Marsh? Can he get to the back of Coot? Going to be cold tyres for Coot on the front there. Marsh and Gork Roger are right up to speed and we know it. 47.6 for Gork Roger, 47.9 for Marsh. Now, the front tyre thing, the rear end is already trying to oversteer. The front end now is going to be incredibly uh, grippy. The rear end, no grip at all. You would expect it to be massively unbalanced. I mean, you no, know, we're gonna we're gonna see, but almost everyone else has decided. Sure, new rear tires, why not? But uh, it could go oh, in Marsh, the other Marsh direction. Spins it. Locks it down, avoids a full spin, but that drops so much time. He was right up behind him and just went a bit too committed, and he drops all the way back to Gork Roger. What happened to him is what I thought was gonna happen to Coot. Now here comes Gork Roger up the inside, takes away P2. Takes away net P2, Dennis Hancock, one of the few drivers yet to pit it, is still technically in the lead, as that's traffic getting right out of the way. We know that this driver's going to have to pit eventually, and you can see not far back is uh, Aiden Coote, who will grab the race lead when that happens, unless uh, Tim Gork Roger grabs him in the next couple laps. Matt Marsh still right with him, though. So uh, I think this is a great place to be. We saw uh, Galk Roger has the pace. If you're Matt Marsh, follow along with that bullet as it catches up to Aiden Coote, potentially. Or do this. Yes, Galk Roger, very smart. He lifted off. He doesn't want to battle. He knows that if they work together, they can get to, to Coote. And they've got the outright pace over him. Galk Roger started from the back, and Matt Marsh was uh, not in the leading duo before the pit stop phase. So they've definitely clawed in the gap. They've just got to avoid running side by side, defending and sewing each other up. Marsh defends. Gork Roger shows no sign of attacking. Ooh, what Justin happened there? Justin Howe demonstrating that that curve on the pit entry uh, is tough. So he's... Well, has he locked up one of the tires and that's just caused him to go straight on? Or has he just gotten distracted by uh, maybe trying to communicate with his pit crew what he wanted from the service? And he's had a tire on the grass. The thing doesn't want to stop, doesn't want to turn when that happens. Going to need a lot more than a full service now. It's going to be a whole roll of flex tape to get that car back out, I would imagine. The official gap is two seconds between them. So it still it is. comes down. Marsh and Gok Roger, you know, I, I can't feel like they kind of squandered that opportunity to really close in on Coot. The one lap that he had the cold tyres and was settling in, that was right when Marsh needed to keep his cool, needed to make hay while the sun was shining there. And, and instead, you know, they're now out of the draft of Coot and kind of battling each other a little bit here. Marsh might kind of live to regret that mistake. Marsh needs to roll off, and he does. So as long as they keep slingshotting each other down that main straight, it does nothing but 
but improve their performance. It's when they go side by side on the corners or make mistakes like that that they start to hurt. I think Gork Roger got away with that one. Doyle and Cook. They were still Solid moves. a second quicker last time by. Yeah, they certainly were. The, the real work with sort of three laps to go for Gal Roger and Marsh is to close up that last couple more tenths to make sure that they're within the slipstream of Coot. And you can see here, 1.5 seconds there, right on the cusp of it. They just need to, between now and the final corner, grab a, a, another tenth or two tenths, and then it will really close in for a three-car battle to the end, which will be delicious to see. Done well here uh, from Siberia and, and Haysheds to really close in that 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 amount that they needed on Coot. Not quite going to be in range this lap, but next lap, if they close by this much again, this is going to be a three-way battle for the win on the final lap of the race. Two laps to go as we cover to the start finish line. And Aiden Coot drives it as far down the left hand side as he can, trying to shake the slipstream that Gork Roger and Matt Marsh are chasing. The gap at the line, just nine tenths of a second. tantalizing prospect for the last couple laps of this race. Uh, Dennis Hancock just drived on the lane, which uh, corrects our running order on the graphics and on screen. Where they are is where they really are now. Everyone has made their pit stop. So it's Coot, Gauk Roger, and Marsh. Coot qualified first. Marsh qualified third. They run where they qualified. Gauk Roger up 28 spots since the start of this race and now it looks like he has to defend from Marsh a little bit but he is right with the slipstream of Coot well can Coot hold on for the ultimate comeback from his race one woes can Gork Roger complete the ultimate last to first challenge can Matt Marsh just somehow sneak his way into the lead by the time he hit the line He had an opportunity, and he uh, probably squandered it. But he's still got a shout. Into MG. A pinch of the break for Coot. This could be three wide by the time we get down the main straight. We've seen being the third car in the train can be uh, very beneficial. You know, he's right in position to be able to get a good run if that's what he decides he wants to do. A little bit of traffic in front of them. We'll see how that affects it. But you can see Gal Roger right with Aiden Coot isn't going to be able to wind up any speed before he has to pull out of the slipstream. Matt Marsh, he's not trying to grab anyone's slipstream here, so he might be just saving this for a run out the final corner. Final lap here in Phillip Island. And Gork Roger wasn't able to complete the move down the straight. Coot got a slipstream for Marker. That might have won him the race. We'll see, though. He's still got the laps to go. But Gork Roger will be absolutely fuming that that was the lap a lapped car happens to be on the main straight in front of our race leaders now watch this look for a big dive down in to the hairpin here comes Gork Roger Coot moves it over trying to defend the inside but on the outside look at how far up he gets on the brakes trying to keep the car the long way around he's there and now into Siberia he's on the preferred line Gork Roger on the final lap for the lead of the race, he takes it away. And Coot trying to fight back with the crossover. He comes back, there's still a wheel to wheel. It just might come down to who's bravest on the brakes coming into MG or who gets oh, they the third line. No! Wow, somehow they keep it straight. Apart, fell off one of the cars. Gork Roger falling back. Coot struggling for grip. Marsh into second on the outside of MG. Coot somehow still holding on is now Gork Roger. Going to lose out to Marsh. Into the final corner. Has Coot got enough of a gap? 
just going to come right down to the line. Here they come. Aiden Coote trying to fend him off. Look into the right hand side. Here comes Marsh. He gets his nose ahead. And Matt Marsh is going to win it on the final lap. What a last lap battle. And out of nowhere, the top three finish less than 900 apart. It's Matt Marsh with the victory. Sean Doyle and Robert Coote also give themselves their own little photo finish, but in this case, Sean Doyle manages to hold on to that one. But it was under one-tenth of a second to cover first, second, and third, three wide as they came to the checkered flag. Battling for third eighth here, Joshua Lindenthal, Matthew Mitz. This one's going to come out of the stripe as well. On the inside, there goes Lindenthaler, but Mitz fighting back up on the outside of the racetrack. In fact, it's going to be Lindenthaler that takes that one on the outside. Yeah, so your winner, Matt Marsh, is understandably delighted as he completes his own little uh, parade lap here. Couple more cars are still going to come across the line. Jake Sperry is going to lose out of position or gain one right at the line. What is going on for uh, for Mr. Sperry here? Daniel and Terizzi, Reda Mackay, 23rd and 24th. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's become a no. toboggan. There's no race no. car left in that thing. There's only two wheels left oh. on the way. <laughs> That's a uh, monumental shunt to finish off the race. Picturesque scenes of Phillip Island after a... Uh, historic opening race for the season. Won't be fitting that one for a while. The series debuts with a bang. Nine hundreds between the top three. Marsh from Coot from Gork Roger. Angus Cook and Sean Doyle, your top five. Robert Cook and Christopher Williams, sixth and seventh. James Dyer and eighth. And Ryan Huckle, Dennis Hancock. Running out your top ten. Eddie Jones in to 11th from 15th on the grid. Nathaniel Weber also a big mover from 28th up into 12th there. Uh, Joshua Lindenthaler we saw in a battle right to the end with Matthew Mitz there. And yeah, just over a second to separate those two. And then Nicholas Walsh, uh, Peter Wilkinson, Vic Bent, Bent Velsen uh, has a drag race with Jake Sperry to the end. And you can see three hundredths of a second to separate those two. Unfortunately, Jake Sperry on the uh, wrong side of that one in 18th. Ian J. Ford there in 19th and Tom Fersheldon in 20th. Keep your eyes on the screen to see how the rest of the field finished. David, let's dissect that finish there. So the contact between Gork Roger and Coot, that's what handed Marshall that victory, I think. I mean, it was the fact that that didn't end in catastrophe for either of those drivers um, surprised me three were gone. beyond anything. Yeah, that could have taken all three of them out of the race, David. I mean, if they spun, could have very well been a case of nowhere to go for poor old Marsh. But I think that's one of the saves of the uh, season already. If you had a tenth of a second to separate first and second, you'd say it was a good race. But a tenth of a second to separate first, second and third all fanned out across the line to the end. You know, a great start to Aussie Car Formula Skip Barber Series. It's exactly what you thought you were going to get with a, a double sprint race format in the Skip Barbers. And uh, boy, did it deliver on that promise, I think, both races. So we've got another five weeks ahead of us for this series. Every Thursday night at the same time, 7.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Where are we headed next week, in fact, if I'm hoping another track with plenty of slipstream opportunities. That's where these skip barbers racing the shine. Here we go. This is a replay of the contact between Gork Roger on the inside, gets onto the curb and runs into the uh, grass. That pushes them wide into Coot. Yeah, wow. And then I mean, you saw wheels interlocked. Somehow they all stay on the car. There's 
very minimal signs of any damage or you know bent steering coming towards the end we can see that again slow from the onboard here and yeah just you know he's trying to give all of the room he's trying to be safe but in doing that maybe just gets a little too high up on the curb and uh, that pushed him out a little wide but you can see that it just all started from Gauk Roger being aware that he was side by side and uh, trying to make sure he, he he stayed close to the apex there all right let's have a chat to Tim Gork Roger, I think I'm saying all right. I can't quite remember. Either way, what an eventful day for you. Race one was a pretty easy, a nice stroll to the victory. But race two, well, go back to the start. You didn't put a qualifying time down. No, I didn't. And uh, thanks, boys. I hope you've had a good night. Um, yeah, no, I didn't qualify. I'd, you know, I had pretty good pace in the first one. And um, I thought I'd have a crack from the back and see how we go. And it was pretty good. Um, yeah, plenty of traffic and stuff. It just took a little while, a little bit longer to get up to pace, you know, to get into the mid 147s than I would have liked. But uh, but it was good, a lot of fun, and just couldn't quite make it come together like I'd like to have had on the last lap. But it is what it is. It was fun, and uh, that's what it's about. Yeah, most certainly. That final lap was one for the ages between yourself, Aiden Coote, and Matt Marsh. Um, obviously, you were running them down for pretty much the whole race, obviously starting from the back, you caught them right at the critical time. And then there was the contact and hay shed. What are your thoughts on that? I, um, I probably felt that, you know, as, as you go through the right hander there, that the person on the inside probably got, you know, I think right away to move to the middle of the track. And where uh, Aiden and I made contact was you know, probably a car width to the right of the racing line. So I feel he didn't probably quite give me the room I needed to, um, you know, get through there safely. Obviously, he had tons of space to the left. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. It was a lot of fun, and, you know, that's what I'm here for. Put on a bit of a show, too. Um, so, no, it's all good. There's no hard feelings or anything. And I, I don't know whether he or um, Matt got the win, but regardless, it was a good run to the line. So, uh, it's all good. Matt robbed you both at the line. <laughs> Take that victory. <laughs> Well, uh, I think I'd be pretty happy with that because he was. Um, we had a bit of a chat between race one and two, and uh, he wasn't thrilled that he lost draft early in the piece. And you know the skippies are a draft car, so once you once you lose it, it's all over. But so that was great. It was really good fun, and I'll be back next week for sure. Well, we're good to have you back next week. Looking forward to round two. Hey, before we let you go, and thank you again for joining us up here in the SimSpeed TV booth. Uh, is there anyone we want to give a shout out to? Any sponsors you need to thank? Uh, look, not tonight. Racing. Uh, for myself, a bit of fun, get out there and support the community. And um, yeah, no, no one, no one to thank, so to speak. But you know, I just got to say thanks for uh, Ira for putting on the series, and of course, you guys for getting on board with the um, with the broadcast. Hey, well, thank you very much. Best of luck for round two. I'm sure we'll probably talk to you again soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. That was Tim Gork, Roger, your race one winner and second runner up in race two. I think we'll wrap this one up here, David. At the end of two races, we've seen a fantastic debut for the Skip Barbers in Aussie Car. Can't wait to see what happens over the rest of the five-week season. If you want to stay updated with all the action, make sure you like Aussie Car on Facebook. I like some Speed TV as well on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. And uh, hit subscribe on YouTube to catch all of our live broadcasts each and every day of the week, multiple times a day sometimes, especially when we get towards the last half of the week. But from myself, Ryan Jones, from David Haynes alongside, and from Jay Kennedy behind the scenes, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.